Hey guys, so here we are back on Wind Chaser. We're running course play on the other truck. Um, we have a really good price on corn right now. Um, great demand. So, I have course play helping me out here, hauling grain. So you can see we need some money. We have a lot of corn to sell. Um, good price, a lot of corn. We need to uh, make at least 400000 off of this corn. Which uh, we should be doing about seven or 800000 off of this, I think. We're a little over, uh, it's $546 a ton, so I think we'll be right around like $32,000, $34,000 a truck. be interesting to see what we get per truck. <clears throat> Been having a little trouble with MSI lately crashing, so I'll probably go ahead and save after each after a couple loads. Nice. Thirty-two thousand. There's our course play truck. I'm liking this. So sixty-four thousand a trip. We're going to be making uh, about ten, ten or eleven trips here. This guy must have taken a sharp turn or something. Must have been me cutting him off. Whoops. Anyways. So we got our first couple loads in. Try to get a couple more in. I had the truck set at 65 mile an hour cruise, so uh, I mean, course play. The course play won't go faster than 65. You can adjust the speed higher than whatever, like 32 or something, whatever it is, with the developer version. Uh, all you have to do is um, increase your speed limit and then just say set to record record speed or whatever like that, then it won't just go blowing past uh, corners because it stops a lot, uh, has less braking power. So I'm really happy. Uh, you can see the difference in price between when sold corn earlier. I'm just going to save this. Just because my MSI has been really buggy lately. So um, 
all of our fields have been sprayed, moisture is decent. We had uh, about three or four hours of rain. Um, we had to put down lime, limestone on 18, just because we were really, really peppered that with uh, fer uh, synthetic fertilizer, and uh, it was uh, slightly acidic. So we went ahead and. Um, Broadcasted some limestone. So hopefully that uh, that does the trick to get us the yield we want on that corn. We're about 50-50 on corn and soybean. Actually, I think we planted it. It's more like 60-40 soybean and corn. Um, we have 44-17-2 and 1. No, no, we have 17-2 and 1. So I think we actually planted more corn. Oh, I can't drive. Too busy chatting. Pull the Jake. put my phone down. There goes the choo-choo train. Got our flashing lights. is just about to come down this dirt road. We don't mess around on wind chaser farms here. take the inside path on everything. These old peats, they can handle whatever we throw at them. So, that was our second load, that was course play second load. Right about there. Started with seven thousand. Nice. Go ahead and say again.
to move our headers eventually. Chaser of arms is hauling core. Now I realize I don't think that amount of grain we're pulling out of those three little silos would actually fit there. I really wish I could set up my uh, multi silo to have capacity, like a capacity. Like you can only fit so much corn or so much grain. You know, like cap each one of the big ones at like 300,000. There's like five of them there. Like the two bigger ones can hold like 500,000. You know, and you like get to pick which silo it goes in. So I want the big one to be corn, another big one to be corn, and then three little ones to be soybean. And then you have to pull all the grain out of it in order to put like a different kind of fruit type in it. I think that would be cool, but it comes out from the same uh, central unload like the multi-silo is now. That would be ideal. And then it would be cool if you had to like actually s store your grain for a seri uh, certain period of time or like wait for it. You know how like silage ferments, but you have to like dry your grain? before you can like sell it to and if you do or like you could sell it without drying it but the price will be lower versus selling it at a uh, like a, a dried grain to get higher price or something or it w it withers inside the silo after day, you know a couple weeks if you just let it sit just add a little bit more dynamics to the game so it's not just Plow, cultivate, harvest, sell. See, soil mod, soil mod actually made it uh, a little bit more fun because we're doing a lot more field work, putting a lot more hours on our tractors. But the uh, combine, the harvesting speed doesn't reflect the yield. Like you could have terrible yield at the same speed. You can have great yield and it will go the same speed, so it's kind of annoying where like in MR and 13 it fluctuated, the speed fluctuated based on your yield because it had a, a uh, it, you had like total cleaning area and like power to the cleaning area and then you had like your loss. So if you're bringing in more grain, then you, then the like meter squared the, over the uh, uh, loss loss level you would lose a certain percentage of your crop so that was cool hopefully Jarrell comes back and or someone else that knows how to do it can um, take over and hopefully now the Giants release the scripts that um, you know, that takes all uh, the guesswork out of it, so people aren't wasting their time just guessing.
still have uh, quite a bit of grain, 889,000. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to sell all of it. Because we had like 1.4 and the silos plus our trucks were full. Or something like that. I don't remember what it was. At least it's relatively close, it's not on the other side of the map. And it's not on the other side of the train tracks, so that would have been really bummer. Get out of his way. He doesn't care who you are. So I was looking at the new uh, pig pig scripts that are out. It's like you can, um, it's like 4.0 now, and you can transfer pigs from one barn to the other. It look, I was reading it. I don't know if it how it actually works right now, but you can fatten pigs. You can uh, your piglets that produce add like they add to production too. You can transfer pigs from one barn to the other uh, what else it's kind of weird because the version I use now like you buy pigs they show up at all the barns and if you feed but um, they the only ones that produce are the ones that you feed so you can like you can buy a hundred pigs and they'll show up at all the barns but if you only like put food in one only one will produce, but you can't potentially like start putting food at all three of the pig barns. So like you buy a hundred, and it's really like you have three hundred, because it shows up at the three. So I'm looking into that. Same with the beef. Um, so see if they fix that. That's the only reason why I really haven't got into like beef and pig is because one. I didn't add viable objects to the sheds yet, which I'm going to. Um, I just have the sheds around here and the dryer facilities around the map and some sil uh, silage bunkers that need to be purchased, but I'm going to make these barns purchasable and the fermenting silos, they're purchasable. I'm going to make the farm on the hill, the whole thing, you need to buy the whole thing for probably like a million or two million or something like that. 
Yeah, probably like seven hundred thousand. Because that has a lot of fermenting silos, and you can just make a lot of money if you were to just ferment and then, uh, you know, sell sell it at the BGA. Um, uh, it doesn't come with the land; you'd have to buy the actual acreage. But you buy the. It has feeding troughs and manure um, triggers from your dairy cows. So the dairy cows would they would show up at the other farm in the pasture, but. You can, uh, it has milk triggers, you can load and unload milk up there on the hill, you can feed the cows, the straw, you know, all the food, you know, it has the exact same triggers, and you can unload the manure, it has uh, liquid manure triggers, um, so it's a fully functioning dairy farm, except the only difference is there's no pastures, you know, the cows, they don't show up. So it would be fun to farm over there, on top of the hill, right in the middle of the map. Kind of. Field 20, 27, 28, 26, 15. All good map uh, fields. We're just a small grain farm right now. We farmed uh, 445 acres. We have some big, big equipment, big planter, big tillage, big tractors, but it still takes us a long time to farm 445 acres. It's 180 hectares, so almost 200 hectares. I think if we ever get up to 300 hectares, you know, be over 600 acres. be closer to 800 acres, I think. Another good time to save. It's crashed on me like two or three times today, so I don't know why.
So after this uh, course play driver drops off his grain, I think we'll have enough um, for that. Yeah, nope. Still we'll need one more. This thing is 360,000. Uh, we'll be getting pretty close to being able to afford that new grain facility so we won't have to use these dinky bins or I could be unloading from one and he could be unloading from another. So we had a uh, operative dentistry summative exam, a perio final exam, um, endo exam. So last weekend, ABC Family had like a Harry Potter marathon, and I don't care. I love Harry Potter, so I had to catch up on that because my last weekend, the weekend before, it was totally shot. Home stretch. It's going to be scary to see how much uh, how much grain we pull from these fields. It's probably going to be around one and a half million liters of corn again. Probably a million or so of soybean. Actually, we're probably going to up our corn count. Picked up a pretty big field, field 18. Am I stuck? Corn's looking really great. I'm really happy I solved the uh, weird uh, crop stripes. Uh, the only way I tried resizing the fruit, all of them the same, but it still occurred. So what I ended up doing was just deleting my entire fruit density file and just making a new one. And that seemed to do the trick. Uh, the only difference is I had to paint in all the grass again, all the, the fruit the crops. Um, all this other stuff is not at an actual fruit so it all stayed. But it sold it. I no longer have stripes and it's looking good so now I just have to go back and paint in all the grass. All on the roads, driveways, fields. So the map's kind of hacked up right now but once I spend the time to repaint all the grass it will be back to its glory clean up all the edges on the roads and stuff I kinda just do it as I pick up a farm and I farm the area that way I can um, just lo load my my save game files into the map for editing purposes, that way I keep the same save game, and because I really have nothing to lose, so chops draw remains.
wondering when this great demand for corn was coming. It took about two, uh, almost three weeks to get here. We're on our last day of the third growth stage. So a good thing I didn't take out a loan. I would have had that loan for three weeks. <laughs> or uh, 12 days. price of corn is surprisingly still really, I mean when you fast forward time 12 days it kind of levels itself out when you only sell three trailers worth of corn. If we had a third, we're going to eventually have to get a third truck if we're going to try to sell grain in an hour. Especially if we had to sell across the map. Rent, rent another truck and trail. I have a num another summative exam tomorrow at one. It's just a clinical exam, nothing special. I don't have to study for it or anything. It's just making sure we're ready for clinic in a couple months. It's just like a large amalgam, I think it is. Another good time to save. I'm getting in the habit of saving after uh, I finish fields and after I sell grain on great demands. And uh, only when I record, just because MSI kind of crashes my computer random randomly. Also the game, like when you're in multiplayer, it like just goes to a black screen if you log out of multiplayer to the in-game menu. Sometimes. Woo! Taking like a two good like 
two weeks or so off from that. I've just been busy with school and I don't really have the energy or motivation to do anything. Just kind of occasionally playing. I feel like it's one of those times where I just need to take a couple break off. A couple weeks or a couple days to, you know, give myself a break, do something else for a bit. Because it's kind of losing its nostalgia of playing. The fun factor is kind of not there right now. There's uh, a few things I want to model, but they're all big projects, so I'm kind of hesitant to start and pull the trigger. Just because I know they're going to be like multi-week builds. I'm not really that motivated at this point. You know, 50, 60 hours to spend on a model is an enormous amount of time, especially how valuable my time is and how precious it is. So, you know, it usually takes me like solid two, two and a half weekends, three weekends plus days scattered during the week, evenings. But that's just not not practical at this moment in time for me, so... I really won't have much time until after mid-July. Then my schedule lightens up, no classes for like a good uh, three weeks. Or I should say no exams. So hopefully around that time I'll be back into the swing of things. Hopefully others will as well and there'll be some nice high quality American models to download. Um, I kind of had my eye on making a, uh, getting kind of sick of corn and soybeans so one thing I was looking at is one of those big air seeders, those horse Porsche Anderson 60 foot air seeders you see all the time on big tractor power YouTube to pull behind the MT875 another thing I had my uh, eyes on was a new RG1300 sprayer, Rogator sprayer um, just because I really like how they look and um, be something different Um, had my eye on making a, uh, a case IH, uh, what is it? I think it's an 875 disc ripper. Um, but since I already have a nice John Deere, I'll probably like. That's like on the last thing to do. Um, then I'm making that soil conditioner for behind the Kraus. That model, the modeling of that is probably 80, 85 percent. Having like four or five hours on that, uh, probably like five or six, four or five. Yeah, it's a pretty easy model. Pulled a lot of parts from my existing models, like hydraulics and hydraulic mounts and framing and bolts, and hitches. So I didn't have to make a lot of that stuff. Picture, you know, easy to see everything. Made new roller baskets though, because they were different than the ones I made for the John Deere.
this area. So, we're going to have about two more trips after this, 15, 18 minutes. Should be doable. Two forty. So if we, yeah, we're gonna take two more trips because we're pulling one twenty each trip. So. Two more trips and 17 minutes, no problem. the corn in this game. Bubba scrub. Bubba scrub. Oh gosh.
Woo. Save me again now that this is the last load of the last load of the video here. I think we're pretty much spot on our, with our capacity with two trucks. We could maybe get one more load in if we really pushed it. But. Mm. At least I could. doing a good job. He hasn't crashed into me yet. Hasn't crashed. Loading green. Unloading it. I think I've only done maybe two, probably two more trips than he has. So it's pretty close. Also driving a bit more unrealistic. Well, I said right around seven, eight hundred thousand. I figured that we would get from this, and it will be right around seven hundred, a little, a little bit over, about seven hundred and ten. 711,000 how you do it.
liking my bank my bank account right now. ourselves a new green complex. We get a good view of the uh, farmyard and the trucks. Got our two 2720s over there. So, uh, thanks for watching.